Hey, it's Greg with Scholar Farms. And today I want to talk about ground truthing because ground truthing is one of the biggest challenges with vegetation mapping with drones. And what ground truthing is, is when you're flying with your camera and you're mapping along, you're going to get a map. Well, what that map tells you is going to be dependent on the plants on the ground. And so you need to go back out and ground truth. You need to harvest the plants or weigh them or measure nutrient content uh, in order to correlate that with the maps and understand what do my maps really mean. Well, one of the biggest opportunities in ground truthing across the world is flying known experiments or ex these agricultural or ecological or forestry experiments with known variation. And that way they have certain test plots, there's a certain amount of replication, and you're able to fly that and get replicated plots that you can then correlate or plot a line against what your treatment is and what the values on the map uh, or your index values actually mean. And so we're going to look at one such data set from Lynn Cove that's out in the Central Valley. It's a research and extension center with the University of California ANR or Agriculture and Natural Resources. Uh, and so we're going to look at that and I'll show you what I mean uh, at, by the value of these test plots or these research plots for ground truthing drone data. So we'll see you in the screencast. And here you can see the boundary of the field station, so the roads that are at the boundary, and you can see all of these fields are part of citrus experiments that occur at Lynn Cove. I'll go ahead and turn off the boundaries, and you can see the base map here and all of these different fields that are experimental trials. So the first thing that I want to show you is just turning on some of these indices. So you can visualize the indices. We'll turn on NDVI since that's the most common index. And within MicaSense as well, we can boundary the NDVI values just to change that visualization and drop out most of the soil behind the citrus. And we'll go ahead and zoom in. And the first experiment I want to look at are just some field trials where they've planted different genotypes. And you can see clear differences in these trees out in the field, both in the size of the trees, as well as the greenness values and the productivity. So this is a clear example of an area with known variation. And we can go out then and ground truth each of these trees, looking at the differences in canopy size or in new nutrient content of the leaves. If we did tissue samples, we could look at productivity for each individual tree since they're tagged across different years. For example, if we wanted to, uh, because they have all of those data there and available. We can look at a different field too. Here's one that has not quite as extreme variation, but again, you can see clear differences among the trees. I'll change this visualization up. We can just look at a CIR composite, so color infrared, and you can really see the differences then in the canopies here uh, and the canopy size. So lots of different visualizations that we can do. So here I'm looking at Osavi. So the point I want to make here is that these research or cooperative extension centers with experiments already set up are just primed for going out and flying and looking at our different indices and then being able to compare those to the variation in the vegetation patterns and trust that these are planted out with replication in a known area in a common environment and that we can then look at the different treatments that are already established. We don't have to establish a new experiment just for drones. We have tons and tons of experiments already out there for citrus or for other crop varieties, for ecological experiments. These known experiments are such a valuable resource. We can look at another area that's established and we can even determine some of the differences in how they've been managing their trees here. So these haven't been quite pruned back compared to others or their different varieties that are out there. So you can really detect uh, the size of canopies. We can do individual scan counts. We can look at where there might be gaps and live and dead trees. But by having known variation and known experiments in these trials, then we can really understand what are the driving factors. And that's what's really limiting in the drone industry today is what is driving these patterns of variation out there. I can pick them up, I can fly every single day, uh, but what does it mean? And so this is an easy way to get a handle on what it means and it's a nice way for private and public partnerships to occur as well. Great, so that's a look at the Lynn Cove data set. I think it's a really great data set for looking at citrus, but there's lots and lots of other experiments that are out there. And so the opportunities for ground truthing by flying these known experiments are really the low hanging fruit uh, per se in the drone industry. So I'm Greg with Scholar Farms. You can check us out at scholarfarms.com. We have a whole masterclass for vegetation mapping and we'll talk to you soon. Music